Welcome back to another Power BI 3 minute tip. If you're liking these quick Power BI tutorials, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell for more content. In today's video, I'm going to show you my take on the dynamic axes trick. And this was originally done via a blog post over at tinylizard.com, awesome website, so I'll go ahead and link to that website in the description. And Guy in the Cube did their take on this trick as well, but I wanted to show you my take on it because it involves a little less DAX and I think it's a little easier to follow and we can do it really quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. So the whole idea of this is to be able to dynamically switch your axes based on a slicer selection. So when I click on name, we have the axis showing Jim, Parker, and Alan, but when we click on product, we have the axis dynamically switch to bike, car, and horse, which is the product. And you can see in our data over here, we have a column for name and a column for product. So the reason you can't do this by default is because you can only throw in one column into the axis, or if you throw in more, it creates drill down functionality, which isn't what we want. So let's go ahead and set this up in a new Power BI workbook over here. So as you can see, I've thrown in name, and if I threw in product here, we would get this drill down, and that's not what we're looking for. Because if we wanted to create a slicer, we could only throw in one column. We couldn't throw in both name and product. See how name shows up with the three selections, not the category itself. So this is actually pretty easy to do. Let me go ahead and get rid of this hierarchy. So in just a couple steps, you can make that dynamic axis. So let's go ahead and go to edit queries. Most of this comes via uh, Power Query. So this is our raw data. The first step that you wanna do is you want to add an index column. This is going to give you basically a unique row identifier. And once you do that, you just need to duplicate your table. So we're gonna rename this table to data unpivot. And now on the data unpivot table, we can go ahead and get rid of the amount because we are creating this unpivoted table just for the slicer selections themselves, not the actual data. That's not important here. And once we do that, just highlight the two columns that aren't the index column and click transform and unpivot. And now this creates two rows for each index. It's basically creating a row for each category. So our column name was, our columns were name and product. So now for each index, we have name, Parker, product, bike. So it basically switches the format of having multiple columns with values into one column of all the different column names and one column of all the different values for those column names. So once that's done, all you have to do is click home, close and apply. And in order to get this working correctly, we're gonna have to set up our relationship correctly. So by default, it probably created a relationship um, for you based on the index because it has the same name and data type. The only thing we'll have to change here is we need to make this cross filter direction both. And once we do that, it'll correctly see the, uh, the relationship. So all we have to do left is create a new slicer selection based on our data unpivot attribute. And you can rename attribute and value if you want. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. So I will create that, I'll make that text size a little bigger so we can see it better. And now instead of throwing in name, we can throw in value into the axis. And when nothing is selected, it shows all of your different values, um, which doesn't make too much sense for our case. So if you make that first selection, it shows the name. And if you select product, it now shows product. So that's a really cool trick that allows you to dynamically switch that axis based on your selection. And to run back through it, the main workforce here is that um, you are turning your data from the structure of multiple columns and data in those multiple columns to just one column of all of your different slicer selections. So this allows all the slicer selections to show up in one slicer. So it's a really cool trick. Go ahead and give that a try. You don't actually have to write any DAX if you use this method. All you have to do is set up that uh, new pivoted, unpivoted table in the Power Query Editor and set up that relationship properly. So once you do that, you're good to go. And I use this in all my reports because it gives it a lot of interactivity. So if you like this trick, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next Power BI 3 Minute Tip.